guys, we have a serious problem and we really need your help. Ever since the introduction of YouTube Shorts, we've been testing it out on our channel. Unfortunately, this has led to a 50% decrease in views across all of our videos. Because YouTube Shorts are so small in length, it's pushed all of our averages down and it's affected our big videos. Now, as you guys may know, this is our full-time job. This is how we pay our bills. So it's a very scary situation. YouTube is all about watch time. So the way that you guys are able to help is by watching this video in full or as much as you can. Even things like leaving a like, commenting and subscribing would really help bring our channel back to where it once was. I understand a lot of people don't come to the channel for me as a person, they come to see my builds. But if you guys do find any entertainment or education value, it would be greatly appreciated if you could help us out. I hope you enjoy. Today, not only are we creating an insane dual system desk PC, but we're also creating a setup around it, so you're not gonna to wanna to miss this one. Now we're gonna be using a lot of different hardware in this system, but we only wanna use one software to control all of the lighting. This is why we've now been using Signal RGB daily. Signal RGB is community driven, it is completely free, and has support for over 345 devices from big brands such as Corsair, Razer, and Asus. They also support most motherboards, graphics cards, and RAM, and are continuing the support and development on all internal devices. Go and check out their site, see if your devices are compatible, and if not, you can actually request compatibility and their team will work hard on getting that implemented. Once you install the software, it'll automatically detect all compatible devices. Signal RGB has an ever-growing library of in-house effects to DIY effects for you to choose from. If you're enjoying your favorite movie, you can have the lighting react to whatever content is playing on screen or you can sync it to your music. During your gaming sessions have the light react to whatever is happening in game. I have this lighting effect a lot in Minecraft. I recommend checking out Signal RGB using my link below or even checking out just to see if your devices are compatible. I know I hate using multiple RGB software so I'll be utilizing Signal RGB for today's video. Subscribing to their pro plan will even further help the team continue their development on the software. Let me know what you guys think about Signal RGB. Our first motherboard in the dual system is a collaboration between MSI and EK Waterblocks. It is the MSI X570S Carbon EKX. This motherboard comes with an EK monoblock cooling both the CPU and the VRMs, so it should keep everything nice and cool. Our CPU for the first system is the Ryzen 9 5950X. This has 16 cores and 32 threads, and this can not only handle intense gaming, but it makes for the perfect streaming CPU as well. The Corsair MP600 core will allow us to run our favorite applications at high speeds. It is a Gen 4 drive and one terabyte should be plenty for what we need. Sixty-four gigs of Trident Z Royal Elite RAM will be used in the system. We love the look and design of the Royals and we think that it will complement the motherboard and the monoblock nicely. Our second system features the MSI X570S Carbon Max Wi-Fi. It's a very similar design to our other motherboard, however, without the monoblock.
we will be featuring the Ryzen 9 5900X CPU inside of this system, which is a 12 core, 24 thread CPU, also perfect for gaming and streaming. As much as I would like a little more storage space, the Seagate Firecuda 530 is a brand new product from Seagate, and it's actually one of the fastest Gen 4 drives you can get to date. So we really wanted to use it in this system. Keeping the CPU cool, we decided to go with the EK Quantum Magnitude CPU block, which is currently the best performing block on the market. Again, very similar specs to the first system. However, instead of the Royals, we're gonna be testing out the Trident Z Neo RAM. I managed to snag up two ASUS RTX 3090 EKWB graphics cards, one for each system, which means we should be able to max out both systems to their potential. The good thing about these cards as well is they already come pre-blocked. Both systems will require some juice, so we decided to bring out the Seasonic Prime Platinum 1300 watt power supply. The second system will be using the ROG Thor 1200 watt platinum power supply, which will be plenty of juice for the system. For the cooling, we decided to go with EK Waterblocks SE 360 radiators paired with the Thermaltake Ring Quad fans. We had planned to use different fans, however, they did not arrive on time.
The EK Quantum Kinetic FOT Pump Res Combos were a perfect fit for the desk. I was actually able to mount two of them side by side in two spare fan spots. I decided to go with a different approach for some of the tubing, but that required some holders to be made to hold the tubes up. So I used a laser cutter to cut them out and insert them. I also laser cut a false floor for the desk PC so that the cables could run underneath, and then I painted that black. I received these cool little gadgets from a company named Mac DIY. It's a voice control RGB VU meter, which I thought would look cool in the desk. There is a mode button on the back for the lighting and it reacts to your voice. I'll leave a link in the video description.
So I ended up going with a 27 inch IPS panel from MSI. The glass on the desk is a smart glass that can actually turn clear at the push of a button. I'd also love to thank Ed from TechSource and the team for hooking us up with a mouse pad for the setup. The mouse pad has stitched edges, meaning the edges will not fray over time. The pad feels nice and thick and great quality, and this will fit in real nice with the setup. I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys would like one of your own. For the audio, we have decided to go with the LG UltraGreer GP9 gaming speaker. This speaker is nice and compact, it has a wired or Bluetooth operation, has EQ presets which can be changed using the LG XBoom app, and most importantly, it has noise cancelling features, meaning that I can use this instead of headphones when I'm talking to teammates, and they should be able to hear no gaming background noise. Here is a quick test. I did notice that it slightly cut off my voice, however, it did remove all background noise. Should be receiving this with all of the noise taken out because it is meant to be noise cancelling. So we'll see how well this comes through on Discord. Sound is crisp when gaming or listening to music, especially when you start playing around with the different EQ presets, which enhance the music clarity and also make game sounds a lot more 3D and positional with 7.1 surround sound. If headsets is your preferred option, the LG UltraGear GP9 gaming speaker also features a Hi-Fi Quad DAC. You can connect your headset to the back for an instant upgrade in sound quality, which can deliver virtual 7.1 surround sound. Along with the many other features the LG UltraGear GP9 gaming speaker offers, you can use the LG XBoom app to control the RGB lighting, personalize it to your liking, and personally I'll be using red for our setup. Guys, if you want to learn more about the LG UltraGear GP9 gaming speaker, I'll leave the link in the video description. Govi have sent in their Govi Flow Plus light bars for the setup. I'll leave the links in the video description. This product has RGBIC technology and it allows us to achieve rainbow-like effects. The light bars can be mounted vertically with the included vertical mounting plates, or you can use the other plates for an adhesive backing to mount them where you prefer. You can control the lights colors through the built-in controller and even apply different music modes. To really see what these lights are capable of, you can install the Govi Home app. You can pair your Govi Flow Plus light bar and give them the appropriate naming. In the scene gallery, you can find lots of presets based on the particular mood you are after. For example, the natural tab gives us a bunch of natural scenes. I'd say Meteor has to be my favorite. However, if you like RGB, there is always the rainbow option. The effects lab is the next section and here you can find basic colors in all types of shades or you can browse through different tabs such as the seasons and find the associated colors. The music section has a bunch of presets that react to sound. Personally, I like the vivid option. Govi allows for incredible customization of the LEDs. You can customize each section of the light bar and play with its brightness. For anyone feeling creative, you can have a play around with the DIY section to create your own effects. However, for me, I'll be sticking with the preset options. I highly recommend checking out the Govi Flow Plus light bar and I'll leave the links in the video description. We decided to get a few bits and pieces for streaming. The Elgato key lights can be adjusted up and down in height. You can adjust the brightness as well as the warmth of the light as well. We also installed a stream deck which can also control the lights. I also ended up getting an Elgato face cam which is a 1080p 60fps webcam perfect for bringing back our Friday night live streams. To go along with the setup, we decided to have a 4-bay NAS from Asus Tor. This particular model is the AS6604T. We decided to go with a NAS because we were content creators and we chew up a lot of storage with our raw 4K Blackmagic footage. This NAS has support for four hard drives or SATA drives and two NVMe slots. For the keyboard, Mech DIY had this very unique keyboard on their website that I really wanted to check out. It is called the TW1867 Retro Mechanical Quick Swap Bluetooth Keyboard. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Yes, it can be used wirelessly if needed. All unique dials and knobs have key functions that are not just there for aesthetics, like the scrolling for volume or dimming the lighting, and you can change the LED functions with the knob up the top. I'll leave a link below. Majority of streamers have some sort of sound dampening and we decided to use the Elgato wave panels to serve as both decoration and the sound dampening. 